The digestive system includes mouth to anus. It's a very torturous tube, um, and it's basically, it, it starts from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and it also includes the liver, which is like the, the junkyard of the body, mm. detoxification, uh, storage, and things like that, and the pancreas, which produces digestive enzymes in your small bowel to digest food, absorb food, and finally, it goes through and it makes stool, and then you expel it. So the digestive system is basically a very brilliant system. I mean, you think about it, the body is able to process all this food and basically absorb all these nutrients and digest the food that you're, um, you're eating and make excrete food. But, you know, the most amazing part of the digestive tract comes now. Okay. It's, not liver, it's not the pancreas, it's not the mouth, the stomach, the small bowel or the colon. Imagine this. Recently, we have found that there are a hundred trillion gut microbiome that live in a symbiotic relationship with us in our GI tract from mouth to anus. It's amazing. Which have so much to, more to do with the digestion of your food than the pancreas, the liver, everything else combined. That's incredible. And up until just recently, we thought, well, it's just a tube. That's just a tortuous tube. You eat and things go through and it comes out as feces. No, there's so much more to that. In fact, we only have, as human beings, about 17 digestive enzymes that come out of the pancreas to digest food wow. in, the, in the small intestine. The majority of digestion occurs because of these little guys, the gut microbiome, living in our gut. So that's where it's fascinating and that's where nutrition becomes key in keeping a healthy digestive tract. Nice, nice. And then when when does it rest? Obviously when we're not putting in food and is it when we're sleeping specifically? Is it when we're meditating? Is it when we're fasting? When can we give it a rest and when should we give it a rest and how long? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. And, you know, I've always wondered about that myself. I've, I've thought, I've asked um, my friends who are gut microbiome experts, I, I've yeah. asked, what is the half-life of the gut microbiome? In other words, if I fasted for 10 hours, am I killing off the gut microbiome? What if I fasted for 20 hours? Mm -hmm. Would that kill off the guys? Because they're eating what we're eating. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to approach this question by evaluating the gut microbiome, the most important guys living in our body, yeah. which contribute to more genetics in our body than our cells, entire body of cells yeah. put together. So no one knows the answer to that. Now, if I were to, I eat for the gut microbiome, literally, that's how I know if I should eat, how much fiber should I eat? Should I eat the fats, like saturated fat that suffocate your arteries and ruin your gut health? Should I eat cholesterol? Should I eat, uh, how much fiber? How much, how many, how many fruits and vegetables should I eat? So I eat for the little guys, right? So keeping that in mind, I was trying to approach that question yeah. based on their lifespan and I couldn't have an answer. There is not enough science to say, but you know, if you think about the natural rhythm of the human body, we're not supposed to eat in the middle of the night. We're supposed to sleep and give our body and digestion right, rest right. during the day. I believe it just depends on how athletic you are. I mean, you're, for example, very athletic. You are burning through glycogen stores all the time. So if you went fasting for long periods of time, would that uh, you know, affect your training. It could. Um, my friend Dotsi Bosch, Olympian, she goes on these long rides. And what if she went fasting? What if she had zero carbs in her? How would that affect her riding? Has she ever fasted? I don't know. It's a good question. I would love to ask her one day. She say no. <laughs> she doesn't fast. You know, what do athletes need? They, they yeah. need carbs because, I mean, it's a funny thing is you ask athletes, most of the time people go, how much protein do you eat? You know what these most of these athletes worry about is, do they have enough carbs, the energy source? I ask my athletes, how much glycogen stores do you have in your body to sustain that bike ride or that yeah. run? You know, that's what's important. It's not the protein that's important. That's, that's what gives them the energy. So people ask the wrong question all the time. How much protein do you eat? You know? And so, you know, for me, I, I just think that it just depends on your training. If you're training hours and hours a day, I wouldn't fast. I think that's, uh, that would inhibit your training. Yeah. So as, as someone, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fitness enthusiast, I don't fast. 
But I, I also know of some places, uh, like Dr. Clapper is uh, into fasting, but you have to realize his patients are patients with metabolic syndrome, with morbid obesity. If you look at his select uh, patients, they have medical problems and he puts them on a fast and he's had great success. So I think when it comes to fasting, uh, there's different data and there's different ways of looking at it.